Hello friends. So now today's topic is convergence analysis of Newton Raphson method. So first of all we will see what is convergence, right? So we will see that what do you mean by convergence is when in Newton Raphson method what we do that first we have an approximation root and suppose this is my actual root. So whatever difference we are getting here in between this that is called what error denoted by epsilon. Okay. So, here this is my first approximation root denoted by x naught and after that what we according to the Newton Raphson method we draw a tangent line and then with the help of this tangent line we get the first approximation root that is as x 1. Okay. So, now we have reduced our error up to this much initially the error was this and now the error is only this much. Okay. So, we can see this is my root where I have to get finally and slowly we are getting towards this point. So, this is called what convergence right and what we are getting this relation between this much of error and this error that is called what convergence analysis. That means in each step in each iteration how much closely we are going towards the root that is called the convergence analysis. Okay. So, that can be get with the help of the error. How? Suppose the error associated with the x naught is epsilon naught and error associated with the first iteration that is x 1 is epsilon 1. Okay. So, the ratio will give the relation between these two value. So, we are going to have a ratio term okay. and in general because we are going to form an in general relation. So, I am writing a relation like this where we have to get the relation of epsilon n plus 1 th iteration to the epsilon n th iteration. Okay. So, relation will be a kind of like this where this k which gives a relation this k terms is of significance this gives the rate of convergence k gives the rate of convergence. So, this is about what is convergence what is convergence analysis and what we have to do here right. Now, we are moving towards the derivation. So, for derivation what I am doing I am assuming a term alpha, alpha as an approximate root of a continuous function f of x equals to 0. Okay. So, alpha is the approximate root which is uh, which we used to take for the first iteration and x n is my final root that is called actual root or correct root. Okay. So, what we are doing here that this x naught I have taken as alpha and this the actual root I have taken it as x n. Okay. So, whatever difference is there we are representing it as error with the epsilon term. right? So, here the alpha term is the approximate root x n is the actual or correct root. So, now x n can be expressed like this with approximate root and error. Okay. This error can be positive and negative both that depends where the convergence is going. So, it may be positive it may be negative there is no problem just for simplification I am taking plus here sign here. Okay. So, suppose this is my correct root. So, what will happen f of x n will be 0 right. Now, this is for the nth iteration. So, what will be the n, n plus 1th iteration that can be rewrite it like this just a modification of this equation. Okay. So, now why, what I am doing? We are taking the Newton Raphson formula. We are, are very well known to this that what is this Newton Raphson formula. If you want to take the what is the Newton Raphson formula and how to deri derive it, what is its graphical interpretation, then you can go and watch the graphical representation video of Newton Raphson method. I will give its link in the description box and you can also find in the i button. Okay. So, this is my formula for Newton Raphson method. Now, I am just replacing all the values here. What is my x n plus 1? x n plus 1 is replaced by this. What is x n? x n is this. Okay. And what is f of x n? We do not know what is f of x n and what is f dash of x n. So, just I am replacing x n here. Okay. So, what is going to happen here? You can see this alpha term is common at both the sides. So, we can cancel out it and we are getting this equation. Okay. And what is going on next? I have an equation that is a function in terms of alpha and epsilon n. There is two term. 
okay. And in next term we have to do the expansion of this two term okay f of alpha plus epsilon n and f dash of alpha plus epsilon n. So, we have to expand this function. So, for expansion we know we have the Taylor series this is my Taylor series okay. So, for this kind of expansion I have given this Taylor series how to expand it how to use it just I am replacing this equation here this is my numerator part okay. So, by using the Taylor series we are doing this and again in the denominator part I have f dash of alpha plus f epsilon n term right. So, we are uh, introducing the Taylor series again in the denominator part with this dash term that is what the differential term ok. So, you can see the both term numerator and denominator has the similar term just the difference is of f dash term because this is f of alpha and this is f dash of alpha ok. So, we can have this expansion using the Taylor series ok. And now we are putting some assumptions for the conclusion of derivation ok. Any derivation needs some assumption. So, here what assumption we are taking that the error term epsilon n the error term is a small quantity. We have already seen that in uh, numericals of numer uh, Newton Raphson method that error in each step is very less and that is why we are getting the uh, final answer in just 3 or 4 iteration right. So, the er error is the associated error is a small quantity. If error is a small quantity obviously, we know that error is always less than 100 percent ok. It is always less than 100 percent that means, it may be 0.5, it may be 0.2. So, suppose it is 0.2 ok and if I am going for higher order term that means, what if I am going to take the square of this term. So, what will the answer of this that will be 0.04 ok. If I will take cube of this term, so what will be that that 0.008. So, whenever we are going to take the higher order of this error then we will get very less number. So, that is why we are assuming that epsilon is a small quantity and here for the simplification we are neglecting the higher order term. Higher order term means what from this square term and up to the last we are going to neglect this term ok. So, we can neglect this square term, this cube term and whatever is coming forward. Similarly, in denominator part also they have here we are again having the epsilon square term, epsilon cube term and so on ok. So, here we are going to neglect this all term right. So, this all has been cancelled out right. Now, what again another thing that alpha we has taken as the approximation approximate root ok and we are considering it that this approximate root is very near to the actual root that is my x n it is very near to the x n ok that means, the epsilon n is almost near to 0 that is why we have taken it you know, as a small quantity. So, that means what that f of alpha should also be equal to 0 because it is very near to the actual root right. So, f of alpha is also become 0 we have neglected this term. So, what we have remained with we have remained with this only with this term you can see we have written this thing right and then just rearrangement of this term then you will get this kind of formation ok. Now, what I am doing in the next step I will take this denominator part into numerator part with the power of minus 1 ok we can do it. So, here I have taken this term and here you can see it this denominator part I have taken this denominator part in the numerator with the power of minus 1 ok. Now, why why we have taken we are doing this because again we have to go for the simplicity of the equation. So, that is why we are doing this and now we can apply the binomial theorem here. What is binomial theorem? We have uh, we all know it we have studied in our schools. So, this is my binomial theorem ok. If you do not know you can see here. So, in this format I am just putting it what is my x? x is this term right. So, this is my 1 minus x plus x square minus x cube this is my term expansion of this bracket term ok and remaining all are same here you can see right. Now, again the similar thing has been come what is the similar thing? Again we are getting the epsilon n square term epsilon n cube term then epsilon n to the power 4 term ok and we have seen uh, we have already assumed that epsilon is a very small quantity. So, higher order will be very 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 small. So, we can neglect it right. So, this again here this will be neglected 
So what term we will be remained with? We will be remained with this term only. Okay, so you can see we are having this term in the next step. Right? Now again another thing, another thing to give attention. What is this? This term. Here you can see there is a ratio of f double dash to the f dash. What do you mean by f double dash? That means d square f of alpha divided by d alpha square. Right? And what is f dash alpha? That is d f of alpha divided by d alpha. If we are uh, differentiating it with respect to alpha, alpha, then it is alpha. Otherwise, if it can be taken as x. Okay. So you, if you will see numerically also, so you will always get the differential, the double differential part. This part will be always less than this. Okay. Numerically, we can see it. This value, this square term, will get the less value than the f alpha alpha that means f double dash of alpha will have the less value than the f dash of alpha okay means this ratio this ratio will be always less than 1 right yes this will be always less than 1 now one more thing you can see here we have epsilon n also okay what is epsilon n we have seen it is an error which has a small quantity and it is also less than 1 so when we are going to have product of this two term, first term is this epsilon and second term is this ratio and both quantity is less than 1. Okay? So the product will be very very less than 1. Right? How? The product of 0.8 into 0.1 will be what? 0.08 that means very less. In the similar fashion we can say this product will be very very less than 1. Okay? That means again we can neglect it because here we are getting the relation with the 1 minus and this product. Okay? So, again we are going to neglect this term. So, how? So what is the remain term? We are having only this term. So, you can see here. Right? So, this is my final expression what I want my desired output. Okay? So, here we can see this is my desired output. How we de get it? A simple derivation where we use Taylor series and binomial expansion and we have some assumptions. What are the, those assumptions? That the error is very small. Okay? Error is very small. So, higher order of the error will be 0 and if error is very small that means alpha is very near to the actual root that is x n that means f of alpha can also be taken as 0. These are the assumptions. Okay? So, we got this as my final expression and you can see now we can compare this equation with the required equation. We want the conclusion in this form. So, the, we can conclude it now. Okay. So, now comparing it the a can be compared with this fraction and what is epsilon to the power k that is this that is the value of k is how much 2. So, what is the rate of convergence of Newton Raphson method that is 2 this is very important. Okay. So, what is the rate of convergence of Newton Raphson method is 2. So, we can say it has a square rate of convergence or it can be said as it has a second order convergence or a quadratic convergence. Right? These all statements are very important because it comes in a one line question or MCQs wherever you, you will get you can find commonly this kind of question, okay? one statement question. Right? So, we got that k is 2, so that is why it's gives, it gives a quadratic convergence or a second order convergence. Now, what does it mean? If k comes 2, then what does it mean? That means, if there is error uh, epsilon n naught, the error epsilon naught which is associated with the first approximation that is x naught, suppose that is 20 percent, 20 percent means what? 0 0.20. Okay. So, what will be the error associated with the next iteration that is x 1 that will be epsilon 1 equals to square of this term. Okay. Now, we have to take the square of this term. Why? Because k has come as 2. Okay. So, what will be the value here? The value will be 0 0.04. That means, you can see in first approximation the error was 20 percent and now it has been reduced to only 44 percent. Okay. And if we will go for the next iteration x 2, what will the associated error? That will be square of this term which term? The square of this term. Okay. So, this term will give how much? The value will be 0 0.0016. Right? So, you can see the error now has been reduced to 0.16 percent only. 
So, this is the importance of this second order convergence and that is why Newton Raphson method always gives a fast convergence in just 3 or 4 mostly in 3 or 4 iteration only we are able to get the our final answer you have seen in the questions. Okay. So, this is the complete derivation and understanding of the Newton Raphson method convergence analysis. Thanks for watching.